Clear Light of Day, Part 5, in which we meet Miss Trigg. When she said goodbye and left Jabez in his workshop, Esme became aware of a happiness that had been absent so long its quality had become unfamiliar. She had become used to the satisfaction of a job well done and the pleasant company of decent people who were disposed to be nice to her, used to the appreciation and delight called forth in her by a sunny day or by dewdrops on a cobweb or the first sight of new lambs in the spring and used to the comfortable feeling of five minutes longer in a warm bed on a chilly morning, or the relaxation of a cup of coffee enjoyed curled in an armchair at the manse after the end of a long business meeting. Life held many comforts and consolations, but not for a long time had she felt this song of delight that came from someone whose soul she recognised as what? A kindred spirit, maybe? Someone whose being spoke to her destiny? At any rate, someone to whom her own soul gave its unhesitating Yes. I think, she reflected as she paused by the front door of his cottage to buy a pot of honey and half a dozen eggs, Jabez Ferrell is going to become a friend. As she motored peacefully back along the narrow lanes in their dappling of sun and shade, through the wooded hillsides and pasture land around Wiles Green, toward South Harbour, with its banked terraces of Victorian red brick dwellings clinging to the steep coastal hills, Esme decided to disregard her standard plan of preaching from the lectionary so as to offer an ordered but varied theological diet of careful scriptural exegesis. Once Easter had gone and they were back to ordinary time, as a change she thought she might preach on contentment. Something about the wisdom of staying where you are, being at peace with what life has offered you, living quietly and simply recognising when you have enough and finding satisfaction in daily work, in what is ordinary, even maybe a little old-fashioned. Philippians 4 would do nicely as a scriptural basis, the whole of it, possibly trimming Evodia and Sisygus off the beginning and the same with Epaphroditus at the end. And for a text, majoring on the assertion, I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. She might even have a point to make about the countryside with its little cottages and the virtues of the bicycle as compared with the motor car always recognising, of course, that some people needed cars and even small trucks to fulfil the requirements of their occupations. Worth pointing out, though, that bicycles have an important part to play in a green future, especially the older, recycled, less garishly painted, kinds of bikes. 
Changing down to negotiate a sharp bend, Esme slightly adjusted her thinking to lower the profile of the bikes in her sermon plan. The spiritual potential of cycling she felt sure might be considerable, but its theological application was perhaps limited. Though there again, her thoughts were interrupted as she pulled out of the bend and spotted ahead of her a line of cars behind an elderly tractor making valiant progress but nevertheless creating an obstruction. On an ordinary day, this might have irritated her. Today, she chose to regard the tractor as a form of angel, a protective escort gentling the excesses of accelerated modern living, promoting longevity in the rabbit population and inner peace and patience in the lengthening queue of motorists in her rearview mirror. Esme hummed a little tune and felt disinclined to overtake even when the opportunity came. As the traffic became more congested in the approach to the town, so also the road signs proliferated and the view changed to one of faded advertisement hoardings, bus stops, edge of town supermarkets with huge parking lots and adjacent garages, all huddled in against the railway station with its taxi rank and little fruit stall and the inexplicable piles of rusted metal girders and broken up concrete. Esme felt its familiarity, challenged by a new sense that the small country chapels and the village communities in which they were set had a special value, deserving at least as much pastoral attention as a larger town church possibly more. The town church could probably look after itself, up to a point. When Esme got in, she found 13 new messages on her answering service, all countering her notion that a larger town church could in any sense manage its pastoral or administrative tasks without the assiduous attentions of its minister. And a late mail delivery, comprising of a complicated letter about changes to the ministerial pension scheme, the local preacher's quarterly magazine, and the draft minutes and agenda for next month's meeting from the church council secretary. Esme applied her usual solution of a large mug of coffee and a chocolate flapjack and then another chocolate flapjack. She felt even guiltier and disliked the round contours of her face and the disappearance of her ribs. But it staved off the moment she had to go into her study, begin returning telephone calls, prepare her Sunday sermon and give a little advance attention to the agendas of her three forthcoming church general meetings. Easter. Light. Morning light dawning into the darkness of the tomb. New life coming with the light. Living living light, she thought. The way of the poor carpenter of Nazareth, simplicity, anonymity, detachment from all the baggage that weighs down human beings, complications of material possessions and relational possessions too, just of being possessive. Jesus let things go, maybe. Perhaps that's why they 
let him go too. The way parting to let him walk through death into life. A light and unlimited. His presence reversed cling and effected freedom. Death could not hold him. He lived lightly. He arose. Jabez Ferrell, she thought, you are a most extraordinary man. Easter. Light. The power to be free. Simplicity. Soaring. Flight. Even the sparrows are numbered. Do not be afraid to live simply. Do not be afraid to soar and to fly. Easter. Living light. Simplicity. Do not be afraid. Jabez. In the Bible, isn't it? Where is that? She leaned back in her chair and reached across to the shelf her concordance shared with several translations of the Bible. The Constitutional Practice and Discipline Manual, Volumes 1 and 2, of the Methodist Church, its worship book and its minutes of conference and directory. Her favourite translation of the Bible was seriously in danger of losing the cover to its spine and the sellotape patches holding the concordance together had long since yellowed and lost their grip. I must get a replacement copy. I think I can set that against income tax. Oh darn, I haven't filled in my tax return form, she thought as she turned the fragile browning pages to the J section. She found Jabez in 1 Chronicles in a complicated genealogy of the lineage of King David. He had only a sentence or two, but it had to do with relief from distress. His mother had so named him because of the pain and distress she experienced in giving birth to him. And Jabez prayed to the Lord, asking that the divine hand might be stretched over him. But here the texts differed as to the desired outcome, some making the prayer a plea for protection from distress in his own life, others a plea for his own distress to cease. But one, curiously interpreting his words as a prayer for God's blessing to restrain him from evil so that he would never again be a cause of pain. How strange, Esme thought as she pondered the texts. I, I wonder why Jabez Ferrell's parents chose or maybe they just liked the name Jabez. Anyway, the prayer of his life seemed to be directed toward healing and peace. And in 1 Chronicles, God had granted what he asked. On Good Friday, Esme had an afternoon service out at Wiles Green. It was a circuit tradition to hike the four and three quarter miles across country along the footpaths from Brockhurst Priory. The walkers were joined at Wiles Green Chapel by the lazy and the infirm and kept watch for an hour in a vigil meditating on the cross and passion of Jesus before emerging into the Sunday school room for a robust bring and share tea. Along with two or three others, Esme left her car at the chapel 
and returned as a passenger to the start of the walk. The wind blew chilly, but the sun shone, and Esme enjoyed chatting with the various members of her churches, getting to know them a little better as they strolled along the hedgerows or stopped from time to time to admire the pasture land rolling away from the brow of a hill. As they walked together, Esme asked two of her church members, a husband and wife couple who ran the news agency at Brockhurst Priory, if they knew of Jabez Ferrell. They laughed, saying, oh yes, Mr Ferrell, known him for years. Before he'd retired, when Maeve, his wife, was still alive, they said, he'd had a newspaper delivered regularly, but like so many of the old people, he had to cut back once he became a pensioner. They asked where Esme had come across him, and she said Marcus had mentioned him to her. They agreed that Mr Ferrell was a bit of an oddity, and then, to her excitement, Esme spotted a bullfinch, and the conversation moved on to recent sightings of birds. On arrival at the chapel, the walkers had an opportunity to refresh themselves with a cup of tea before the service. Esme reflected that the sheer quantity of teacups washed up in the course of the afternoon overall required a stoicism worthy of Good Friday on the part of her Wiles Green congregation, nearly all of them well over 70. As she came in through the door of the chapel, where the trestle tables ready with teacups and milk jugs and huge brown enamel teapots stood in the Sunday school room that formed an anteroom to the worship space, Esme paused to watch her church treasurer, Miss Lucy Trigg, divesting herself of her felt hat and plum-coloured tweed coat. Miss Trigg, local preacher and senior steward at Wiles Green, had the entire congregation under her thumb. Though she was raised as a strict and particular Baptist, she had found her way to this chapel when still only a teenager and unstintingly lavished her considerable energies upon its spiritual welfare ever since. The South Harbour Circuit Preachers Meeting had neither the backbone nor the foresight to refuse to accredit her as a preacher and had suffered the effect of her extraordinary gospel of chimera and retribution ever since. Esme had heard Miss Trigg preach on one of the Sundays in August before she had taken up her appointment. Miss Trigg always came in handy for August. Ministers might be moving, preachers with school children in their family necessarily taking their holiday then, but you could always rely on Miss Trigg. Esme remembered the sermon vividly. Miss Trigg had preached about the Virgin Mary with reference to the lamentable slippage of traditional interpretation in the credo of the modern church. The Lord Jesus was born of a pure virgin she had asserted, more aggressively than was necessary, judging by the nods of agreement here and there in her congregation. He had to be born of a virgin, because if he hadn't have been, his blood would have been the same kind of blood as yours and mine. And our blood's no good, no good at all for salvation. Jesus Christ wasn't born with blood like yours and mine in his veins. He had God's blood. God's blood 
that had to be shed on the cross for our salvation to save sinners like you and me from the eternal punishment that awaited us. Quite rightly awaited. Deliver us from evil, the Lord's Prayer says. And note that word, evil. Evil is not just knocking folks on the head and bumping them off, but a hundred and one little things that you and me get up to every hour of every day. We are born evil, sinners from the day of our birth. Little children are evil, however innocent they may look. You leave a child alone in a room with a bowl of sweets on the table and you can guarantee that child will eat one. For children are thieves and evil by nature until they are saved from the thrall of Satan by the precious blood of the Lamb and brought to the mercy seat by the free grace of Jesus Christ who gave himself a sacrifice for sin and laid down his life in our place. For the wages of sin is death and only his blood could atone as an acceptable offering to a holy God. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. We are not called to understand, only to accept. Never be ashamed of the virgin birth. Esme had listened to this with some amazement, but had over the months come to a workable relationship with her Wiles Green senior steward. Miss Trigg disapproved of her appointment because Esme was not only a woman, but a divorced woman. But she was gracious enough to relinquish none of her offices and maintain her usual grip on the life of the chapel at Wiles Green. Sometimes Esme felt that grip amounted to a stranglehold and was occasionally tempted to the view that if the congregation justified its existence in nothing else, it did so by the community service of keeping Miss Trigg contained in the chapel. Still, she kept the books well enough, lived nearby, and was always willing to let in builders and the man from the electricity board. She terrorised the leaders of the mother and toddlers group that met in the Sunday school room every Thursday and the cleaner employed to come in on a Friday. Not today, Good Friday, but that lady was expected to attend the act of worship instead. Once free of her coat, Miss Trigg got busy with the teapot. Her scones were her own recipe and her tea hot and powerfully strong. Much like the gospel she preaches then, Esme thought as she approached the trestle table saying, Lovely day, Miss Trigg. Thank you for all this. I know what hard work it is. Half a cup will be plenty. I'll add some hot water from the urn in the kitchen. Sometimes Miss Trigg remembered that smiling was her Christian duty. Today she was concentrating on pouring the tea. Age made her hands a little unsteady, but she scorned to acknowledge this. She wanted the Lord to find her at his post, at her post, when he came again. The second coming caused her a certain amount of consternation because of the amount of traffic on today's roads, which would inevitably be thrown into mayhem by the selective nature of the rapture. She walked to church when she could, on the days when her sciatica didn't play her up too badly. 
Silently, she held out a half-filled cup to Esme. Their eyes met. Nice day, said Miss Trigg gruffly, prompted by the requirements of Christian charity. Is that enough? Esme knew that shameless flattery and many expressions of solicitous concern for her health could melt that seemingly implacable ex exterior. But today she felt disinclined. Yes, thank you very much, she said, taking her drink with her to the refuge of the small and spotless kitchen where some of the ladies of her congregation stood chatting with dish towels at the ready. I've got some neat tea here. Needs diluting, Esme said as she made her way to the urn. And they laughed. Esme thought it an undeserved kindness that her church members would usually laugh at her jokes, however feeble. They had many ways of surrounding their ministers with tacit encouragement. She stayed with them enjoying their good-humoured company while she drank her cup of tea. It occurred to her to ask them about Jabez Ferrell, and all of them knew him. They told her how his wife had died some five or six years ago, and how they thought the bereavement had aged him. They agreed on his devotion to her, especially in nursing her through three or four years of gruelling illness. Terrible, they said. Started in her breast and went to her liver in the end, poor woman. They mused for a while on his avoidance of chapel people. They said his mother used to be a member at Wiles Green Chapel years ago and Mr Ferrell's name must surely be in the baptism register somewhere. But they thought there'd been some kind of upset with the members of the prayer group while his wife was ill. Not that that had stopped him coming, because he never came near the place anyway. And they agreed that he was a funny old so-and-so, and that the old lady who lodged with him was even funnier than he was. And they chuckled as they considered the household. But they all agreed that Mr Ferrell would be the man to go to if she had any household repairs needing attending to. He's Andy, is Mr Ferrell, and very honest, they concluded. And then they took Esme's cup to wash up as she went into the church to prepare for worship. Been a busy day here. We've been sorting and clearing. I came across somebody who was um, moving into a new place and didn't have any furniture or any household supplies to take with her so we've been looking through to see what we could sort out and of course that brought to the surface all kinds of bits and pieces that we decided our home would be better off without. Good things, you know, the kind of things you hold on to just in case they come in handy one day. And then you realise when you meet somebody who needs some extra stuff, you didn't need them after all. So that's had us busy turning things over and packing them up and photographing them to see if the lady would like them and getting everything ready to go. So that's been my morning, really. Quite full. And how about you? What have you been doing today? You know, while we're having these stories and I ask you these questions about what you've been doing with your day, you've been emailing me, some of you, and telling me all about what's happening in your life with your family and with your soul in these unusual coronavirus times with your homes, the path you're walking on. 
it's really interesting to me to hear from you about how things are going in your life. Heavenly Father, I pray for every single person here who is listening to the story and coming to spend time with me. We know that you are with us, that you too are sitting beside us, listening and sharing in the conversation. Help us to be alert to your presence. Help us to do you the courtesy of giving enough space for you to get a word in edgeways. Because, Lord Jesus, we really do value your guidance and your calling. What you have to tell us, the things you want to remind us about. Even though we don't always think and we don't always show it. It really is actually the most important thing in our lives. Stay with us, Lord Jesus. Walk with us in every day. Never stop calling us, reminding us, showing us the way. Amen. So, I hope you have a good day, or if it's your bedtime story, or late evening where you are, then I hope you sleep well tonight and wake refreshed in the morning. As always, it's so nice to see you and spend time with you. Go well. God bless you.